you know, yeah. you mentioned Tyra that, you know, the Keisha is not Tyra. It's just kind of like, you know, inspired by it's an amalgamation of, I'm sure, a lot of different types of power bitches that you've met while you were working in as you work in the business. But mm. even though it's not up, it's not Tyra, I would have to imagine that she can't be 100 percent pleased about I, well, you know, I've yeah, I've not spoken with Tyra since the book was announced, but we hadn't we haven't really spoken in the last couple of years. We used to even still email. Um, the last time I saw her was very positive. We talked about her son, and she just lit up, and I'm so happy for her. I know how it was such an important, uh, uh, you know. Uh, it, she, she's always wanted to have her own child, and it, and we've had so many great conversations about that over the years. So. I mean, ultimately for me, you know, Keisha is, is a character that represents, you know, um, really kind of, not, it's not even an individual. It's looking at a system. Mm -hmm. It's looking mm -hmm. at this, this uh, you know, when we look at fashion and entertainment, you know, everything is built upon this kind of awkward, you know, pyramid of chaos, which is starting to unravel. We've seen it with yes. the Harvey Weinstein's, et cetera, of the world. And it's because it's always existed. So really, Keisha's representing that, you know, and, and one of the things that um, had come up very early on um, after my, my book was submitted to, to my agent, et cetera, and, and um, you know, and, and actually one of the first things that was said, because I go against literary convention in the last third of the book, I do something, I have this metafictional mechanism where I kind of blur the lines and break the fourth wall. Mm -hmm. And it's, there, it's by design to force the reader into their own world and to examine the relationships in their own life. And so ultimately, I, you know, I wrote the book with that intention, knowing that the literary world may look at this and go, what? you know, we don't do this. But, but it was also to further, you know, um, kind of go back to this idea of what Keisha is meant to represent. And it's not an individual. And someone mm -hmm. on my team said, hey, you know what? Um, what if we made Keisha Kirsten? And she's white. And, and this was someone I respect. And I just said, you know, with all due respect to you, I just don't think you understand how powerfully racist that statement is. <laughs> yeah, exactly. No one, would have, no one would have gone to Lauren Weissenberger and said, hmm, mm -hmm. Miranda Priestly, right. Anna Wintour's white. What if we made her black or Chinese? Or yeah. No one would have said that to a white author. Mm -hmm. So I really felt that I had to keep it authentic because it doesn't matter who, you know, what race I really made Keisha. People were going to always draw a parallel back. And I thought, what a wonderful opportunity to have, uh, you know, this wonderfully rich, complex, you know, black, powerful woman. You know, I, I look at what Shonda Rhimes did with um, blowing open the doors with How to Get Away with Murder. And yeah. Viola mm -hmm. Davis brilliantly played Annalise Keating, who we loved, we rooted for, and then we stopped trusting, and then we hated her, and then we loved her again. And, and I just think, you know, we need to see more whole uh, black female characters, not only on screen, but also in literature, if we want to be truly inclusive. So I said, no, I'm, I'm keeping the story, you know, authentic to kind of the world that I know. But back to that. Yeah, I, I, I have not spoken to Tyra. I'm sure she's not happy, happy about it. But, you know, again, it's a, it's a work of fiction. Mm -hmm. But as authors, we do write what we know. So right. there are some very real emotions tied up, you know, in the piece for sure.